Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today. I'm Amber Turner, aka Hippie Fit Mom, reporting for iGirl Tech News, your resource for all things tech and highlighting females making an impact in the tech industry. Today I have with me Vidya, Technical Program Manager at Microsoft. She is an engineer by profession, singer by passion, and dreamer by choice. So hi Vidya. Hello, Amber. So nice talking to you today. Oh, awesome. Yes. So thank you so much for taking the time to, uh, to chat with me today. Absolutely. But, Pleasure. Yeah, and I read a lot about you, and you are undeniably making an impact in the tech industry. So I want to know what sparked your interest in technology, and when did you know that tech was what you wanted to do? Honestly, Amber, there was like not really this aha moment when I realized I'm going to go do tech. You know, it was there wasn't a moment like that in my life. It was a natural evolution, I would say. Uh, my extended family has relatively more boys than girls, and almost all of them chose engineering as their profession. And they all have amazing careers. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to give engineering a shot and computer science was my first choice. So I had music as a backup plan just in case I don't, you know, do well in tech. So I was working in parallel to get a professional degree in music too. So by the time I finished my first year in my bachelor's, I realized this is really interesting and I am able to you know, succeed. So I graduated with my bachelor's in computer science and then started doing my master's in computer science. And I got my internship with Microsoft just after the first semester and there was no turning back since then. Wow, that's awesome. Like Microsoft is like the epitome. So how, <laughs> how did you end up getting an internship there like for for people wanting to really get into tech what I guess what advice would you give them so my internship I honestly speaking I did not expect a call from Microsoft at all like it was a stretch goal for me yeah I did not have any prior experience working because I came to do my master's right after my bachelor's so I met with Microsoft representatives and they came to my school to the career fair and I handed up my resume and I was like yeah okay and then I got a call and I was like oh my god <laughs> so, so I remember that December I had vacation plans I canceled all my vacation plans and did nothing but study for the next, you know, probably a month or something to crack my internship interview. And then uh, when I came here, I just fell in love with this place. Like this, the company, the culture, the staff, the, the team, the role. So everything was just perfect. So I said, I knew that this is where I have to start. You mentioned the culture. Can you describe the culture to us? It's Microsoft is a really, really big company, as you know. Yeah. So every org and every team is no two orgs are really that similar, I would say. So I work in, now I work in the application and services group. The culture is very flexible. It's, it's, you have so many smart people working alongside you. So that is a really a huge inspiration for junior women like me. Honestly, I am, I've been working only for the past two and a half years. So by all means, I am still learning and growing and continuing, you know, to learn. So the culture is, it's, it's very flexible. People are all very adaptable here. They want you to succeed. They help you to succeed. Uh, my upper management in that aspect, I've been very fortunate because I like to do a lot of things beyond work. Like I'm still trying to pursue music. I am still trying to volunteer with uh, you know, other interests like Grace Hopper and Anita Barg Institute and a couple of other volunteer organizations like ASHA. So all of this takes time and yes. sometimes you have to juggle your work and all the other things that you're doing so that you can do justice to everything. And my management has been very, very supportive in all of those aspects. So I if you that's Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Go no. ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say I think that's great and I think that's very important for a lot of millennials is to have that flexibility when it comes to their profession. So that's awesome. Yep, absolutely. And you're a technical program manager there. So um, for those that do not know, what can you talk a little bit more about what a program or technical program manager does? Absolutely. Program manager at Microsoft is, is one of the three technical roles within software development. So as a program manager, you are like the link between abstract concepts and completed 
solutions, I would say. Okay. So think of yourself as the in-house advocate for millions of customers worldwide. So as a PM, you think about a problem space and then you think about what an ideal solution is. And then you drive the technical vision, you design the user experience, you draw user interfaces sometimes, and then you iron out all the implementation details like feasibility, the limitations, et cetera, et cetera. And then you work with all the partner teams and stakeholders involved, and then you actually build the solution with your developers and testers, and then you use data to take a call about shipping or not shipping. So as you can see, as a PM, you get to be a part of this amazing, amazing journey of transforming this abstract concept into a solution that delights millions of customers. Awesome. So what would you say, say you most enjoy? Like what part of it? Many things, I would say. Okay. For starters, I really like the range and scale of problems I get to work on and the impact it has on, on the customers, honestly. It's not often that you get to impact tens of thousands of customers, right? Yeah. And then I also like thinking about the am ambiguous problems, like most of the problems that we get to work on are not really straightforward. So it's like, think about uh, you getting a super tangled wire and then you start untangling it when you realize that you're actually untangling. And the other aspect that I love doing is designing user experiences. So that is something that's really close to my heart and um, thinking about like putting yourself in your customer's shoes. So from your experience being in the tech industry, what would you say are some important personality traits that are important for people to do great in tech? The other thing that I noticed and I'm, I'm trying to pick up on is adaptability. Like today's world moves very fast and you need to be really, really quick on your feet yeah. and respond efficiently to changing circumstances. So in your day-to-day -day work, you get to work with a lot of people. Like you cannot build innovative solutions if you are siloed. That is, that is definitely something that everybody should be thinking about. So you work with a lot of people, some who think alike and some who don't, some who agree with you, some who don't agree with you. You have to always think that and place your team's goal and your company's goal, you know, uh, ahead of your personal interests when it comes to working as a team together. So adaptability is also something that will definitely help you succeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what advice would you have for women that are wondering if tech is really something they want to do? I would just tell blindly, give it a try. Don't quit even without trying. Like I, I often notice that some people, I talk to some school girls and I try to mentor some school girls, like they think a lot, thinking is good, but it's not like you cannot get the full picture until you get into it. Like you cannot drive a car until you actually drive a car. Yes. So give it a try and and no, like every person is so unique that nobody but themselves can decide if it's working out or not, honestly speaking. Yeah. And today's world is so flexible enough that switching careers doesn't seem to be that difficult. Yeah. I have a friend who pursued medicine and practiced it for many years, a successful doctor, but at some point she wanted to try out interior designing and she's very successful in that field too. So if you're really super skeptical and are afraid that tech might not be for you and you might fail miserably have a backup plan yeah I, I had a backup plan when i started music was my backup plan so but my main advice though is don't give up even before trying and when you are trying give you a hundred percent yeah so that you actually know that you gave it your best shot yeah take a chance and if it doesn't work out have a backup plan i love it love it. <laughs> <laughs> with, the, with the fact that there's still a lacking as far as the presence and the female tech are with females in tech industry. What do you think that the tech industry can do as a whole to encourage women to get into it? This is definitely like the talk of the hour, I would say, Amber. I mean, everybody is talking about it, especially after some big tech companies release their diversity reports. So it's no secret the tech industry is incredibly male dominated. Yes. And a lot of discussion about the reasons for this gender gap and the possible solutions to narrow this gap. According to me, this itself is a great step ahead. The fact that we are talking, we're realizing, and we're taking initiatives. Yeah. I had a mentor from IBM, and he was mentoring me all through uh, my third semester, I guess. So even though I was in school, I was able to see how life is when you are in this industry. Mm -hmm. So all of those are great. But as an individual, 
what we should be doing is we should just try to close the gender gap. Yeah. Have to ensure that it's 50 50 and all women around you are treated equally as men. I mean, I come from India, so I've seen and still keep seeing several instances where men get higher privileges than women just because they're men. I mean, from an individual perspective, I think closing, trying our best to close this gender gap is the best contribution we can do to this industry. Mm -hmm. And I think you're, you're right too. And it really starts with us really talking about it and really addressing it. So I yep. think, yeah, it, I think now that we're talking about it, that's the first step. Yep, absolutely. And you're an active volunteer for Anita Borg Institute. Can you tell us what they do and why it's so important? Oh, absolutely. Um, I'm an active volunteer with Grace Hopper Conference, which is one of the initiatives by Anita Borg Institute. Okay. So the ABI is an organization founded on the belief that uh, women are vital to building technology, which is true and the world needs women, which is also true. So they're on a quest to get more women into tech, which is very much the need of the other. So the Grace Hopper Conference is the world's largest gathering of women technologists. It's a three-day event packed with sessions and activities for women technologists at all levels, like ranging from people in school to executives from really big companies. So the conference program consists of featured speakers, award ceremonies honoring uh, outstanding women and their contribution, networking sessions, technical sessions, career guidance, career fairs. So you name it, you have it at Grace Hopper. So this is very close to my heart because um, when I first went to Grace Hopper two years ago, this is going to be my third Grace Hopper, I found a mentor and she is an amazing person. Like, by, like I'm pretty sure that I couldn't have met her outside Grace Hopper. So, and I really believe in what they what they want to achieve because that is very much true. So I volunteer a lot with them. For the past two years, I've been volunteering as a member of the Grace Hopper community. And this year I got a chance uh, to be a part of the Grace Hopper conference leadership, which is, which is an amazing experience. So I'm also driving one of the internal Microsoft Grace Hopper committees. And this year the conference is in Phoenix next week. And we are all so excited to attend the conference, I would say. It's fun. <laughs> It is. It's three days of, three days of, you know, craziness in a very, very good way. I would say. And the conference conference ends with a kick-ass party, which is something that you really don't want to miss. Oh, cool! It sounds yeah. fun. Yeah, and I would really encourage uh, the iGirl Tech community to like attend the conference. If you are in the U.S., the conference usually happens in the U.S. They also have another conference in India. But if you are elsewhere, because I know that you guys have uh, your communities across the, all over the world. So if you're elsewhere, check out the website. We have a lot of volunteers taking notes and blogging, tweeting about everything that's happening. So hopefully you get to be a part of the conference virtually. Yeah, awesome. So um, what are you most passionate about? What gets you excited for a new day? Because I know you mentioned too that you are an awesome singer. So is that one of your passions or what else are you passionate about? Like, I, I love to hear about people's passions. Um, music is definitely my, it's very close to my heart. I've been singing for the past 15, 16 years actually. So my mom put me in school and my music class together. So all credit goes to her. But um, what I'm most passionate about is the fact that there are so many more opportunities that I still haven't explored oh, and cool. there is still so much out there to do and being busy really makes me happy. I mean, some people call me weird, but that's, that's how I like it. So I really like to multitask. So I take on every opportunity that comes my way. And if I don't find enough, then I go looking for opportunities. A lot of these volunteering opportunities that I am doing now are things that I just went after and asked them to, you know, give me a chance. So right now I'm juggling between music, my work, my day job, Grace Hopper, and a side project that I'm working on. So, um, I don't want to stop singing. I want to continue singing, continue pursuing music as long as I can. But uh, alongside music and my work, which I'm also really passionate about, I still want to continue doing the other things that I'm doing right now. Yeah, sounds like you're very hungry. It's always a great. <laughs> that's always a great attribute to stay busy. Yep. I'm so, I have what, this, huh? I have this quote written on my on my desk saying, "If not now, then when? If not you, then who?" Exactly, exactly. So what kind of music are you into? 
Uh, I am learning Indian classical music. Awesome. I, I also sing with a couple of bands in and around Seattle. We sing Bollywood. Uh, I can speak four, three Indian languages and English, so I get to sing with multiple bands in multiple languages. So that's definitely a plus point. Cool. Excellent. Yep. So what's been the hardest part of being a fem female in the tech industry? Have you ever experienced any challenges or obstacles that you over you had to overcome? I personally haven't faced any hardships because of the fact that I'm a female and I am in the tech industry. Microsoft in that aspect is an amazing place to work and they're really supportive to help you succeed. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been very fortunate, like I mentioned before, to have a management that not only helps me succeed at work, but gives me opportunity to, to do things beyond work. But the hard part, though, is breaking the stereotypical expectations that the society has about women in general. Like, I was once told that I'm being too aggressive when I try to get something done. Like, driving for results is not being aggressive just because you are a woman. And then a friend of mine once told me to be more girl-like when I tried to, like, take on some things that she felt women should not normally take. So these are all, like these bother me a lot, honestly, because I fail to understand why is there a boundary in the first place? Like, and, and what is the boundary really, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think we have to do our part to like break those stereotypical expectations, which, which, is, which is what bothers me, honestly speaking. And I think that's probably the hardest thing to do. Yeah. Yeah, because it's hard to change someone's mindset. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I absolutely mean what I, I absolutely know what you're saying. Yeah, it's I think that's a really tough obstacle. Uh, so. no, for sure, like especially when a girl gets or a woman woman gets married. Like I got married a year, year and a half ago, and I have this friend of mine who went to school, so he very well knows that I'm studious, I'm ambitious, and all that. The first question he asked me after congratulating me was, "So are you still working, or are you just cooking for your husband these days?" I was. You gotta be kidding me! Yeah. <laughs> like really? Yeah, like what year is it? Is it 2014? <laughs> like, exactly, right? Yeah, so we have to break that. Yeah, definitely. So excellent. Before we go, if others want to continue the conversation with you, where can they find you online? Oh, I am. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Like just search for me, Vidya Srinivasan and Microsoft. I should show up. And on Twitter, my handle is vid. Srinivasan, so I can type it and then you can share it, you know. So I'm also, I was not super active on Twitter before, but I am active right now. Uh, so I, I think I realized the magic of Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah. <laughs> it was just too many things, too many social media avenues. And now I'm just like, you know, uh, channeling so that I'm, I'm able to be more productive. But you can also get in touch with me on Twitter or LinkedIn. Awesome, awesome. So thank you so much for chatting with me today. It definitely was a pleasure and I really appreciate it. And thanks for joining us for this conversation and make sure you check out iGirl Tech News at iGirlTechNews.com where we're sharing awesome insights on females making an impact in the tech industry. And until next time, be good.